origin story. Take one. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> I haven't said anything. It's all good. Hey, my name is Ian Mavity, and this is my redemption story. So I didn't really grow up going to church as a kid. Uh, I actually started going to church when I was in the sixth grade. And at that time, it's kind of like a weird place to be because you're at this church, people are singing, and they're talking about God, and you're like, that's cool, but I don't really know what that means. And so my parents wanted me to go to youth camp, so I went in the sixth grade, and my brother went there as well, and he actually got saved that year, which is really cool. And my brother told me, you have got to walk down that aisle, and you have got to uh, do that. And I'm like, okay. Well, my brother just got a whole bunch of attention. That sounds like a lot of fun to me. I'll do that. So on the very last day, I went forward, and that day, I rededicated my life to Christ. But there was one major issue with that. I never dedicated my life to Christ in the first place. And there's nothing for me to rededicate. And then um, everyone at church was kind of confused about what my decision was. And I just kind of agreed. And next thing I know, I'm up in the baptismal, getting baptized and claiming to be a Christian. But I really was never a Christian. And, I, and over time, I ended up hating going to church completely. It was not where I wanted to be. And I didn't like anyone at church. And the ironic thing is, is it was this church. I didn't like anyone there, except for one person in Sunday school because he was a leader, came up and shook my hand and left me alone. And that's what I wanted at a church. If I had to be there, I was, I was gonna be miserable anyway. Uh, it just took over time that I still was forced to come to church because my mom made me and my stepdad made me and I'm thankful for that. But I used to be that guy that made fun of the Christians that would do see you at the pole and pray around the flagpole once a year and make fun of them. And um, sometimes I was forced to go to that anyway, and I wasn't happy about that. Um, but then something crazy happened. I started making friends in youth group. And this is a very cool thing because all of a sudden I had a purpose to go to church. I had friends there. And one of the most powerful things I had ever heard is one of my friends, before they were my friends, said, Hey, we've missed you. Where have you been? After I had missed going to church for a few weeks. And those were life-changing words to me because I'm like, wow, the people here miss me? Like I was worthy of being missed? What is this? So I started coming and I came to like everything at that point. I loved it. If my friends were there, I wanted to go. And then one night there was a revival at our old church building. I remember this night so vividly because it was a night that I accepted Christ and I made a decision to follow Him. The pastor was talking about heaven and hell and everything and I just remember he had us all bow our heads and close our eyes and he said, if you know for a fact that you're a Christian, raise your hands. And I raised my hand and I got this feeling like I was on a roller coaster. My stomach was spinning. I felt sick. And when I raised my hand, it got so intense and so much worse. And at that point, it was like the Holy Spirit said, no, you are not a Christian. And I wasn't because all I did was rededicated my life, but I never dedicated it to him. So once the invitation was called, I shot up out of my chair and I walked as fast as I could to my youth pastor. And I told him like, I did not have the right flesh because that was the imagery that was being used in the sermon. You are either a child of God and you have that flesh or you do not. And at that moment, I just knew that I was going to live my life differently and live for Christ. I never said a prayer, but I did decide at that moment, that was my turning point, that I would surrender my life to God. And after that time, I got involved in serving in worship ministry. I started leading worship for the youth group right out of high school and kind of been doing that ever since in some ways. And after meeting with Dr. Mike and Ross, it was just a powerful time where they invested in me and they discipled me and I realized that I needed to do something else with my life. I wanted to follow Christ and what that would look like. So I went to seminary and eventually was able to be hired on staff here to be the worship pastor. The beautiful thing about my story and my redemption story is that my redemption is still happening every single day. The, every day that I choose Christ, He is reforming me and helping me and shaping me to become more like Christ. And that's the powerful thing about redemption, is we are still imperfect, 
but we have a goal to become more like Christ every day. And that's my heart, and that's what I want to do. And so, that's my story.